this. We don't see this one every day. This is the classic Simplex 2120. Yeah, buddy. There's only one left around here. I used to work on these things all the time. They were the coolest panel in the world. This is the reason I came to work for the company. To learn this thing. If you could learn the programming on this, it was the foundation for all the panels that Simplex put out. The 4100Us, the ESs, the pluses. They all used the same programming method. And it all was invented here. We used to invent programs for Fire Alarm. They just took all the good ones and packed them into the 4100. But this panel here, you can make anything you wanted to. So let's take a look. Uh, we have a, a uh, little readout here. And a lot of times, our, and a keypad here. And a lot of times, the first thing we would do when we came into a service call, would, we would hit L for list. And we knew that L was list. And the paper would run out of list. Now, of course, this is going to tell me everything that's on. Okay. Looks like we've got some air handlers running. Oh, we have a problem with the fire pump tamper switch. I believe that's exactly what that is right there. We can hit location information. Fire pump tamper switch. That's what our priority two is. If you notice, it's the same as the 4100 plus or U or ES. You have your priority one, this would be the uh, priority two or known as uh, yeah priority two and your trouble and you would have your acknowledge buttons across from it. You have your single silence and your detector reset. You also see the printer's a little old the, and the, uh, the, the uh, take up can't keep up with the what it's putting out. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of wind this up by hand here. But uh, yeah we would always do a list before and before we left the service call and checked to make sure that everything's okay on that. But just to simplify this, what I really like to do is I like to go ahead and hook up my terminal to this and then we can get inside of this panel here. Uh, so what we're going to do is open this up and let me grab the cable here. If you notice, there's an RS-232 port right here. This is going to be port number two. Um, we're going to plug that into there and we're going to plug this other end into the laptop. But first what we need to do is we need to verify that our port set up for a terminal or it's set up in terminal mode. So what we're going to do is log on and the log on for this would be L O G space O N slash P A for password. And you'll see that it says log on and it's looking for a password. Okay, now written inside the door is our password here. I want to show it to you quick. Uh, another way to find a password is to actually go in and look at the prime chips. Uh, the password is written on the label on the prime chips. But sometimes they used to take and scramble, took, take the first uh, letter off the beginning and put it in the middle and scramble it up a little bit for us. So we're going to go ahead and, but I like to write it down so I can see it all the time. 952E, 952E080. If you notice, nothing printed out because they don't want you to see what the password is. Enter, and it says accept it. Okay, now we're going to hit DEV. And you're probably wondering how I know all these commands, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But DEV is going to list my my uh, RS-232 ports. I only have one on here. It's device number two. And it's set for unsupervised acknowledge. Okay, now you might be thinking, well, what about device number one? Well, it's an RS-232 board in the panel here. Okay, it has two ports. Port number one goes to our printer board for our local printer and keypad right here. So that handles port number one. And port number two goes to this RS-232. Okay, so now I'm going to get to the part where when we go to the computer. Okay, now what we need to do is depending on your computer. Um, and this, by the way, this is just a standard 9-pin, 25-pin 
uh, standard printer cable. It's not a null modem. It's not reversed or anything. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, depending on what version you're running in Windows, you could use Hyper Terminal, but in this version here, we're using one called Terra Terminal. And we're going to select Terra Terminal. Okay, and then we want to use the serial port. And we'll select OK. Okay, now we go to, I believe it's Setup, and we go to the serial port. Now this panel here communicates on 1200 baud rate, so it comes default 9600. So go switch it to 1200. Uh, the, the default data bits and the parity and the one bit, um, that's all default. That's all good. And so we'll hit OK. Um, let me go ahead and expand this window, make it nice and big for us. And I'll go ahead and plug my uh, port in here. Okay, so first thing I want to do is hit enter. Okay, uh, there wasn't anything in there, so it said invalid entry because it didn't recognize, you know, uh, no command. So now we're now we're actually into this panel here. Now we can go ahead and do our list, the same L enter as we did before, and it will print out everything that we saw on the list, which is really cool. Now you got to remember how this panel works. Okay. When you first turn on this panel, we have these boards here. These are called the, uh, the PRAM boards. All the default programming that was originally programmed for the job site is on these PRAM chips here. Okay, and when you turn on the panel, what it does is takes all that information from the PRAMs, okay, and it loads them into the RAM on the CPU board. Loads it into the CPU onboard RAM. Okay, and then from there, the system runs off of the RAM chip. So looking in this computer, basically I'm looking into this RAM chip. So anytime I want to make changes, I can make changes. And I'm just making, I'm just changing the RAM around. That's why these panels, uh, if they are ever powered down and started back up, we would have to load our program back into it or load our changes back into it uh, that we made and there was ways of backing up the changes now just to clear up some things uh, just for some basic uh, functions of this panel um, what I want to do is um, since I'm in here um, what's really cool about this panel is I get to interact with it okay I get to ask it questions and it talks back to me we go back and forth you know um, not like some of the newer panels where you have to uh, put the program in it and then go out there and test it and see if it works or not. Um, this one here, you know, you, we can uh, disable everything and we can test it and we can watch everything that happens and verify that it is going to happen before we actually do our real test and we'll be more confident uh, when, you know, test day comes along that everything's going to work okay. But if you're looking at this panel now, you're looking at a blinking block and you're thinking uh, what am I going to do with this okay let's go ahead and type in help and hit enter and it prints out a list of uh, things that help topics basically now they got this funny little symbol here and it says that indicates minimum abbreviation so you can see help all I really have to do is hit H and it understands what help means. Okay. Now let's say we want to set the time and or the, yeah, let's say we want to set the time in a panel. Okay. Here's time right here. So we're going to go H space T I M E. Okay. And it's going to tell us how to set the time. T for time. That's a minimum abbreviation, and it tells you hours. And in here is AM PM, which is really saying we want to do it in a 24-hour format okay um, so actually right now I can hit T and enter and it's going to tell me the time 1312 112 oh that's right on time but if we had to change it we would just say T space 13 colon 12 enter and it would enter the time and date and to verify we hit T and enter uh, the same thing with date H Help on the date. 
that tells you how to put it in. DA, minimum abbreviation. Then we want the day, three-letter month.